as we invite our neighbor, we are honored to have Ambassador of Uganda, who is going to share or bring greetings on behalf of his community and his country, but also the fact that he was the first one to understand what this organization is trying to do. SSU is going to, SSUA is going to be the voice, the voice of Swahili speaking people to address needs. It's going to be the voice to address needs, to address problems here in the United States. Because if we are not organized as an entity, we are not going to reach anywhere. For those who understand the Hispanics, they started with um, CASA. Right now, you have CASA people who are in the member parliament and everything else. So their problems are addressed because they organized themselves and they said, we need a place for the daily laborers. That's how it started. So when you look at the Swahili culture, Swahili sp speaking societies, I'm looking at from the dressing to the dancing to the way we speak in parables. Sometimes you don't want to offend someone, but yet you have offended someone simply because you said, mm-hmm. Oh. And before you know it, there all is fireworks. And that's what makes us so unique, ladies and gentlemen. We are unique in our own way, and it's up to us to make sure we, we acknowledge, we embrace who we are, we embrace our culture. The culture is not just language as Pastor, I'm sorry, as Professor, Professor Boa said. It goes beyond that. We want to leave the legacy of our children who will be so proud, saying their background is from Swahili community. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome our Ambassador of Uganda, Ambassador Katende. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I will be inspired by the professor who has just been here to address you in English. First of all, let me congratulate. Oh, let me recognize the elders here. We respect you very much. And let me recognize all the people here from Swahili speaking countries. I congratulate the organizers for reaching this stage of launching Swahili Society in USA. Congratulations. It would look funny that on an occasion like this, you invite a Ugandan to address you. <laughs> you see, we have had a very bad history. As you know, in Uganda, Swahili was spoken by the army. And that is because the colonialists wanted to use the army for good purpose, but they had to have a common language when all our forces were under care, African, Af African rifles. King's African Rifles. Because of uh, what we went through, for us the army was a bit hostile to the population. And uh, the language was a command language. So we came to know Swahili as a command language, where they say, Lalakini, Fungua. In fact, if someone wanted to rob you, he would speak Swahili. That's the Swahili we knew. 
fungua mlango unfortunately that is the the seed that made it impossible for Swahili to thrive at a speed it should have done in Uganda. But those are the old times. I had the opportunity to be one of the senior officials who was involved in the reactivation of the East African community. And uh, three of us from Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania said what will be the role of Swahili as we are drafting the treaty. And what you see in the treaty, as it appears, that was in our handwriting. And we are happy that uh, the high authorities adopted to incorporate Swahili in the treaty as a lingua franca of the community. So when I was invited, I'm already a converted person. I congratulate you and encourage you to promote this project. At the community level, there are a number of initiatives, and I believe this society has some role to play. One of the great losses our region suffered was the departure of Mualim. Mualim was the bedrock of what we are calling Swahili culture. And uh, for all of us who pretend to be the other Swahili speakers, we really count on the United Republic of Tanzania to keep pushing us. Because there is a lot to be done. There are new things. And as you remember, Mualim used to, he was the encyclopedia and also the thinker, but he brought together many people to come up with new words where there was a challenge because there are many disabilities and so on. So we hope that this society could play a role. not only to come here and dance and listen to our great uh, uh, comedians here. Thank you so much, by the way. It was great uh, entertainment. We can do more. We can do more in terms of the thinking, thinking in, this, in, uh, in the Swahili language how to enrich the thinking and interpretations and connect with the countries on the ground and the initiatives they have in place. But also, when I read the objectives of this association, 
I felt that there was one objective that was missing. The one of prosperity. Pro prosperity for ourselves and also prosperity of our countries, the United States and our countries of origin. How can we put together our minds and resources to play a role beyond promoting the language and the culture? You people in the diaspora especially, you have a big role to play because you are exposed, you are exposed to the good things that make America a great country. You know how people have answered their dreams through this country. You have been exposed to the science in this country, the innovations. And if all that is put together, it could mean a lot for your prosperity and also for your country's prosperity. Where I have been meeting Ugandans, I have been commending them because the diaspora is a great source of foreign exchange for the old countries of origin. I can see here in Tanzania, you are close to half a billion per year. That's big money. But the, that money is not solidified. This money goes as some help to relatives, a house here and there, It's very difficult to account for it, governments to account for it. Naomba tusikilizane jamani, naomba tusikilizane tumpe heshima barozi wetu. Asante sana. The, 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 there is, uh, if with all the knowledge and the environment you have, this is what I've been telling Ugandans, if you could leverage these remittances into platforms that can make more impact for yourselves and also for your countries. In Africa now, many countries have realized this resource and that's why we interact with you as ambassadors. We, we, we are glad to interact with you because of that role you play. Countries have put in place policies on diaspora. Countries have put in place institutions so that they can guide you into platforms where you can make a difference for yourselves and also for job creation, either here in the US or back in Tanzania, back in Uganda, back in Burundi, and so forth. So for me, that's the message. Once you have this association, promote the Kiswahili, the Kiswahili I don't know why we call it Kiswahili, but for us, the language, we call it Kiswahili. I don't know. Ugandans, we don't know this. We, we are behind, but I hope 
I will learn from today. To promote Swahili and the Swahili culture, that's good enough. But we should be able to do more. To do more in terms of the development of the Swahili culture, language, arts, music, and so on. I was very happy to listen to Ta Tarabu, uh, which, which I like so much. <laughs> and I had not listened to it since I came here. So I really felt at home. Those are sellable. So beyond even all that, let's see how to leverage into this prosperity. Once again, congratulations and best wishes to you. Jamani mpigieni makofi ya nguvu sana. Kwa sababu amekuwa ni wa kwanza kufika hapa na amevumilia na tunashukuru sana sana kwa salamu ulizozitoa. Najua planning committee wameandika chini points zote na watazifanyia kazi. Ndugu zangu, without further ado, na muomba Professor Daktari Patrick Nyangula from North Carolina makofi jamani. Our kino speaker. Shukuru wazazi wangu wakati wote Ushauri wao wenilete ya mafaniki omema Sasa naishi na watu vizulie Sasa naishi na watu vizulie Asante sana mama mushara kwa utangulizi ulio nipatia Kwanza tunianze tu kwa kusema machache kushukuru meza kuu uh, unajua ni vigumu sana uh, kuzungumza baada ya wa, kwa Kiswahili wanasema magwiru kwa mfano balozi kutoka Uganda uh, balozi katende uh, mama balozi vile vile naye ni akademi ya mama mula mula a uh, professor magembe kwa hiyo nilikuwa nimekaa pale nikifikiria nianze vipi uh, kwanza kwa Kiswahili alafu baadaye nitajaribu kuzungumza kwa Kiingereza <laughs> uh, mengi yamezungumzwa pamoja na kwanza kabisa na professor boas ambaye huwa tunakuwa naye katika vipindi vya radio uh, radio DW ya Ujerumani uh, mara nyingi vile vile wanakuwa katika radio ya Voice of America Washington Bureau hapa katika vipindi mbalimbali vya kujadili masuala mbalimbali ya kiuchumi, kisiasa na mambo ya kijamii yanavyoendelea hapa Marekani kwa taarifu wananchi katika bara la Afrika katika nchi zote unazoziona hapa zilizowekwa katika bendera uh, kuwapatia taarifa mbalimbali katika lugha ya Kiswahili. Kwa hiyo ninashirikiana nao watu wa Voice of America pamoja na DW katika vipindi vyao mbalimbali na hii ndio sababu kubwa iliyonifanya mimi kuitikia wito wa kuja kuongea nanyi katika siku hii ya leo. Kama nilivyotambulishwa siwezi kujirudia vile mimi ni Patrick Nigula ni moja kati ya wafadhili katika chuo kikuu cha South Carolina kutoka Colombia na niko katika idara ya management science kwa kuonekana ninaonekana kijana lakini nimekula chumvi kidogo nyingi na <laughs> hiyo inatokana na tulivyokuwa vijana tulikuwa tunafanya mazoezi kidogo kidogo Kwa hiyo basi ngoja ni nibadili lugha kidogo kwa sababu hotuba yangu niliandika katika lugha ya Kiingereza. Na ningependa ninge kutokurudia yale yaliyozungumzwa na wazungumzaji uliopita. Uh, kwanza tunianze 
unajua tumeshazeika siku hizi hata kuona atuno ngoja nivae miwani uh, let me start it by acknowledge the uh, the distinguished guest uh, his excellency ambassador katenge if i'm not mistake pronounce his name uh, ambassador mulamula uh, professor bors uh, professor magembe and one of our elder professor Ruta Yuga and all the invitee guests here. Uh, let me start it by asking how many of us here speak Swahili? Pretty much uh, I can see is over 99% of all of you here in the audience uh, as Swahili speakers. I am quite humble to be part of tonight's event it is all, this is a remar remarkable days as we set a good start to support a newly launched organization, Swahili Society USA. Indeed, it is an, an opportunity we have to not only celebrate Swahili language in our community, but also sharing our experiences. As we all know, Swahili language is a language that is so rich in values. As His Excellency Dr. Katenge described, today it is one of the fastest growing languages and predominantly spoken in East African region. It is a language spoke, spoken by over 150 million people worldwide. That's a quite a significant, very high number. Did you know that here in America, there are 50 universities based upon a research that I have done that they teach Swahili language? I am. I am sure some of us listen to the international radios that broadcast in Swahili language. So this is the big deal. Because as I've said before that I'm one of the contributor in the Voice of America Washington Bureau here in Washington DC and also the DW radio in Germany born. Well, first and foremost, we need to understand the history of the Swahili language and culture. Swahili started in East Africa. This is way, way back between 14th century to the 16th century. The Arabs and Persians, they came to East African coast to do business with our ancestors back in the days. One of the factors that lead to the exponential growth of the Swahili language was commerce. Essentially, that was the beginning of the globalization history. History tells us there was a movement of the people, goods, capital, and information at that time. Today, we continue to experience the same trend. Today, we experience the globalization that includes movement of the people, capital, and information. These types of the movement still hold. In fact, we have the knowledge that globalization has created or has acted as a catalyst for Swahili growth in parts of the globe here in America in Asia, in Australia, and also, I can say, in China. Today, we have more than a dozen countries that have spoken the Swahili language. Swahili is also spoken here in the diaspora. So what is so important? We can pose that the question, ladies and gentlemen. 
let's pause for a second and think about this. We can't ignore the fact that Swahili has a stake in our society. Swahili has a history. Swahili has, has present and has a future. Therefore, we need to understand what kind of future Swahili has. Well, I believe as a language, Swahili has values. Dr. Bors pointed out a couple hours ago. Swahili has a bright future. We need to choose whether we want to be part of this journey or not. I think it is important we become part of this, all of us here in this audience tonight. As the members of the diaspora and, and Swahili speaker, we have a role to play. Ladies and, gen and gentlemen, that's the whole reason we are here tonight. The plate you just eat here with the pilau, I think in Mandazi. Uh, what, what, what was that? The, uh, um, all of that food out there. A a everything there, okay? So we are here to celebrate our food, which is mean including our culture, our language, we share stories. And I also believe we're here to embrace the values that Swahili brings. History now shows that Swahili language has unified many people, particularly in Tanzania. That's a very good example. We have over 120 ethnic groups. We speak the same language. That's what we see in Tanzania today. It's a peaceful country. We invited people from Uganda, Kenya, Rwanda, Republic of Congo, and all of this is because of the language. In this case, it has been proven that a language can strategically unite people who have differences. It is the powerful of a language. However, though, I think it is critically important that we, Swahili can build a strong economy with the Swahili speaker in order to preserve, enhance, and grow the language. Today, or tonight here, most Swahili-speaking nations have small economy with less influence to global economy. Ambassador Kitenge, Kiteng, Kiteng, I'm sorry, he, he, he emphasized that we need to leverage that a couple hours ago when he was giving his remarks. So let's make, let me get back to the Swahili in our communities here in the DMV, Virginia, North Carolina, and elsewhere, maybe in New York. What I have noticed that Swahili has continued to unite us and always reflect our background. So many stories are shared daily in Swahili language. A good example, there's a significant, very high numbers of the WhatsApp group. People write day and night in Africa, here in America, and sometimes I have to shut them down and get out of it because the people are writing and writing. But it's a good thing, though. We share some stories. Swahili continues to be a language used between diaspora members, as I've just said, and those in other parts of the world, including Africa. Today, we use that technology software in Swahili language. A good example is Google and Microsoft. I think they've developed an operating systems and search engines that you can translate it words in Swahili into English. Therefore, Swahili has a stake in our communities. I think we need to be clear that language is bigger than our division and differences. Let me repeat that. I think we need to be clear that language, Swahili language, is bigger than our divisions and differences. It is bigger than our skin color, our ethnic group, or our religions groups. I'm going to repeat that line again. It is bigger than our skin color, our ethics group, 
old religions group. So when you go home tonight, think about those lines. Think about, look at your friend, your neighbor. Call your friend and your neighbor and say, this is what I got when I bought the plate for $50. Dr. Patrick Negulo from, from a little town, Columbia, South Carolina, he came to this dinner gala and say that Swahili language, it's, it's, it is bigger than our skin color, our ethics groups, or our religion group. So what we need to do going forward from here, ladies and gentlemen, I thought about it when I was writing this speech, listening to the WhatsApp group, reading the Facebook comments, and I say this, it is important, important to, we continue to support one another and embrace the Swahili languages. We need to nature and participate in developing Swahili language in our home and communities groups. So we need to teach our children. I've seen the ch children here dancing and we need to teach them and perpetuate the language and it is culture. We need to support institutions and community groups that promote the language and culture. So let's join our effort to support the Swahili Society USA. Lastly, I know you're all ready to dance diamond, new music and all that. Let's invest in Swahili language so it can bear fruits. One of the dividend is reaffirming or strengthening our unity and hope in our communities. Again, hope in our community, especially here in the ATC Metro. We need to, to see stronger connection between diaspora and our motherland back home. If it's in Kenya, if it's in Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, and Congo. There is a Swahili proverb that says, I'm going to say that in Swahili. Umoja ni nguvu, utengano ni udhaifu. Let's have one voice. Again, let's have one voice and have one vision that will continue, will continue to, to build this bridge and connect Africans, those who are within the continent and those outside. We hope Swahili Society USA this is Swahili Society USA, will continue to be a platform that not only to promote the language, but unite people of different backgrounds. We need to continue to exchange valuable ideas, again, valuable ideas and knowledge for the purpose of social economic progress in our communities. We, are, we as Africans, especially from Africans, we are lagging behind. This is the fact compared to the other ethnic groups here in America. So what else do we need to do? Let's again remind ourselves that Swahili has a stake in, and place in our heart. And, and what else? In a community. So we need to remove that stigma that language it is important. Look at the Hispanic and Latino how they progress in this country. So, we'll, so we look forward to some, someday celebrating another milestone in this journey as Dr. Boers and the ambassadors they have alluded here a few, few hours ago of embracing Swahili language. Again, Mungu Ibariki Africa, Mungu Ibariki USA. Asanteni sana kwa kunisikiliza. Makofi jamani, makofi, makofi, makofi.